All right, so the first thing we talked about in our first slug talk was likely linear regression. I don't, it was a long time ago, I guess I don't remember. <laughs> it wasn't you, it was the overview talk. So this is the first, uh, the fundamental, I suppose, learning mechanism for in statistics. So just f uh, setting up notation, bless you. You can consider the linear model where y equals x beta plus epsilon, x is the n by k matrix with rank k, beta is a k by one vector. Y of coefficients, y is an n by one vector of responses and epsilon is a vector of errors which are distributed ID, normal, zero, with variance sigma squared I. So if, like I said earlier, frequentist methods seek point estimates, and that's the same thing with regression. Here we're going to try to seek point estimates by maximizing the likelihood function with respect to beta and sigma squared. So this ends up being the likelihood function for the regressions uh, for beta and sigma squared, and the unbiased OLS estimates end up being these two equations, which you've likely seen hundreds of times and don't want me to say again. Whereas uh, Bayesian regression, on the other hand, again, we'll try to find the posterior distribution of beta and sigma squared, given the x matrix and the y values. So I here use L beta sigma squared given x and y, which is this, and it's going to be the same equation as in this <coughs> case. So the point I guess I want to stress here is when we have no prior information or very uninformative prior information, <laughs> Bayesian methods and frequentist methods will more or less give the same answers. Uh, so when we have prior information, and the prior information is good, let's stress that, your estimates from the Bayesian approach will likely be better. But you're just going to use a likelihood function from the frequentist setting and multiply it by the prior information that you have. Uh, is anyone conf so that means that the posterior is, conf is proportional to this, this value right here. I've dropped uh, the marginal density of uh, the vector that I've observed because at the end of the day, like this, this is going to be an integral which has to integrate to 1, and you can just find the constant which makes it do that. So we don't have to worry about doing a complicated calculation to find marginal densities. Uh, there are two types of priors, or primarily two types of priors in the Bayesian setting. If, and if you know more, please share. Uh, conjugate priors and uninformative priors. So the conjugate prior is going to be, is a type of prior where your posterior density ends up being uh, of the same form as your prior density. So the conjugate prior for the, Bayesian, uh, for the Bayesian regression setting is beta given sigma squared normal, and for sigma squared is something called an inverse gamma with a, the parameters a and b. And the uninformative is just beta is a constant and sigma squared is 1 over sigma. And the posterior distribution condition on sigma squared for beta in the uninformative case ends up being normal, normal with mean beta hat and variance sigma squared. And beta hat is this right here. So when we, again, when we have no information, the distribution of beta is centered around the OLS estimates. And when the point estimates, if you use the modes, are going to be the same in both situations. So let's do an example. Um, I used, there are tons of packages for Bayesian regression. MCMC pack is a pretty good one. That's not one that I've really used. Or I, I used it a bit, but I, I didn't really use it in this context. Uh, but the one I use here is from Jim Albert. And he wrote a book called Bayesian Computation with R. So if this is stuff that you're interested in and want to learn the more applied version of Bayesian computation. That's a book that you could refer to and probably teach yourself. It's not too complicated. Uh, so this is just a data set from the Mass Library with 506 observations about the suburbs of Boston. I fit a model with the median value of owner-occupied homes and four predictors. Uh, the function is blindreg uh, from the Learn Base package, which is Jim Albert's package. So I just fit the LM function, and I'm going to show the similarity between this, these two answers later in a different slide. But here, I'm sampling from the posterior density. Like, there's not, well, we find the density or the posterior density for the parameters, and we have to sample from it using computational algorithms. It's not, uh, and then we can use that information to find modes. That's what you have to do in the Bayesian approach. And if anyone has more insights on that, please share. So these are, this is all. These are histograms of our parameters and the standard deviation. Um, 
as you can see, I didn't or I didn't use any priors or informative priors in this situation. So these are all look normally distributed, and inverse gamma with high A and B approaches nor a normal distribution. So these all look pretty symmetric. Uh, to find the credible intervals in the Bayesian case, you would find uh, the 0 0.025 quantile and the 0.975 quantile, and have those be the endpoints. And the that's just your credible interval in this case, and that's the simple version of it. A highest posterior density would be you start with the horizontal line at the mode of your posterior distribution, and you just bring it down until 95% of the area under the curve is between the two endpoints that you end up at. Is that, yeah. So OLS confidence intervals are using this fit, and the Bayesian credible intervals are exactly the same, because I have no prior information. So that's something, again, that I want to stress. Same answers when we have no priors. And if we have good priors, we'll likely be better answers, especially in the small sample case. <laughs>